Hello, everyone. We hope you're all keeping well, and thank you for your time and joining us for this webinar, Back to School Support and Resources for Inspire Science 9 to 12. My name is Sarah Shuja, and I'm the Marketing Manager at McGraw-Hill based in Dubai. Before we go any further, I'm going to pause here and check if the audio connection is working all right. So on your screens on the right side, you will see a hand icon. Uh, it should be just below your name. Can you please click on the hand icon if you can hear my voice? Excellent. Okay, I see a lot of hands going up. Brilliant, so you can hear me, we're sorted there. Um, I'll give you a brief overview of the session for today. This is an implementation training session for Inspire Science 9 to 12. So if you teach grades 9 to 12 and are using Inspire Science in the upcoming academic year, this session is for you. <laughs> You'll learn about teaching strategies and how to redesign your classroom. Um, our speaker, Jason Marshall, couldn't make it today. <laughs> There's a heavy storm in Houston where he lives, but we're absolutely delighted to have DJ West with us today. Thank you, DJ, for joining us. I'll just go over moderators for today and the session so that me, my colleague Afsana, and Ahmed. We will be here to get your queries on the chat box and also the Q&A. So if you have any questions, you can drop them in the Q&A box. If you want to chat with us with the presenter, please, you can do that. We'll be able to respond to your queries. Your trainer for today is DJ. Uh, a bit of a background on DJ. DJ is a National Director of Professional Learning at McGraw-Hill. He has an experience of 25 years in science and math education as a teacher, as a dean of student and principal. Uh, DJ coaches professional educators in presentations and technology skills across K-12 core disciplines. He has delivered professional workshops in US and internationally. It's an absolute honor to have you with us, DJ. Thank you so much. I'm going to pass on to my colleague, Afsana, who will just go over the housekeeping slide, and then we can let DJ begin. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Just a quick sound check. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Um, as Sarah mentioned, just before we begin, I thought we'd leave to just cover off a few things. Um, so if you're having any audio issues during the call, um, most of you, I can see, have logged in using your device um, in terms of not calling in using your network, but using your Wi-Fi. So if you do have any issues with that, I would just recommend disconnecting and then calling in by actually using the phone numbers available in the calling function. Um, of course, things that could impact the net, your internet could be other platforms that might be used in the home, such as Netflix, YouTube, or other gaming platforms as well. Um, however, if you, do, if you do miss anything during the webinar, the session is being recorded, so um, we will be circulating it afterwards as well. Um, along with the recording, we will also have a certificate sent to you all afterwards, so that should arrive in your inboxes within a week of today. Um, please bear with us in terms of timing, just because uh, it can take up to five working days to actually come through. And of course, there will be a Q&A at the end as well. And just finally, um, you probably noticed we can't unmute you just because of the webinar settings we have set up. But you can use the Q&A and the chat boxes on the side to engage, to add your comments. Um, if you have any technical issues, just drop me a message as well in the chat box, and we'll aim to get that sorted for you. OK, now I will pass over to you, DJ. Here we go. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Excellent. I do have my headset on, so Sarish and Hassan, if there's any problem hearing me, let me know. I'll turn it off and just use the microphone on the um, on the computer, okay? Sure. Great. And then I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And... Can you see my slide on Inspire Science? Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Well, welcome, everyone. We're glad you're here today. And I'm going to take you through a variety of things. But before I do that, if you would do me a favor, locate the chat box and 
during the session today, I'm going to be asking you a number of questions. When I do that, I'll all of these ask you to type it in the chat. So if you would do me a favor, if you could type in what you teach subject wise and where you're, where you're located at right now. So while you're doing that, I just want you to know I'm located in, we call it upstate New York. So Syracuse, New York, not New York City. I'm about five hours from there. And it is uh, eight o'clock in the morning here. So I'm joining you first thing. I know it's afternoon for you. But if you don't mind going ahead and typing in the chat box what you teach and where you're joining us from. I'd love to know that before we get started. And I'm going to give you just a minute to do that. And then while you're doing that, um, I just want to highlight a little bit about the agenda that we're going to be doing. I'll say, okay, physics in Kuwait, Kuwait high school biology, biology, See if I can get a few of the others. Physic, physiology and anatomy, physics from Lebanon. Egypt, biology. Excellent, okay. Now, as we go through, just remember if you have questions, um, oh, chemistry, okay. If you have questions while we're going on, put those in the Q&A, and then for the general chat, we're going to use the um, chat box, and I'll be asking you to use that at different times throughout, okay? I will stop at different times in the presentation and ask for ask for questions. So what I'm going to do is kind of flow through, stop every 15 minutes or 20 minutes or so, see what questions we have related to what we've been talking about, and then we'll go on from there. The agenda today, we're going to look at these things over the time we have. We're going to start out looking at the next generation science standard elements that are built into the Inspire Science program. We're then gonna look at the program design. Now, I know as high school teachers, you have a certain way that you teach in your classroom. We're gonna look at how the program has been set up to incorporate the normal things that you do, but we wanna make sure you understand how the NGS elements come in. We wanna to touch a little bit on assessment and support. We're going to spend some time in the online resources and one of the things I want you to know tied with that, the next bullet point, we're in the US just like you in um, the Middle East, we're in all kinds of scenarios as far as going back to school. It varies from state to state here and from district to district. I know there it varies from school to school about how you'll be back at the beginning of the school year, whether the students will be remote, whether they'll be part of the time in class and part of the time remote, or whether they'll be fully in class. That's gonna make this a very unusual year. So one of the things that we wanna do is to make sure that you understand how these resources could be used remotely. And then the Q&A will do throughout as we go through the program. And the other thing I want you to know, and some of this was already mentioned by Asana, um, one, make sure as you're attending, you're gonna minimize your internet usage. I don't know about you, but over the last week for me at home, um, my internet has not been as strong as normal, and we think that's because so many of our students are back in school remotely, and they're pulling some of that bandwidth. So if you have Netflix on, if you have somebody gaming in the house, it would be a good idea to have them shut that down. The second one, I'm gonna correct, ask questions in the Q&A, and then one other thing I wanna mention before we go further, you have a variety of professional development you within the program you're using. Go over just for a minute um, to the program itself and show you where to find those professional development resources. Now, if I were you, just a recommendation, I would make a note of this location so you can go back and access these quickly. Now, I'm gonna click launch on my biology program and we'll be looking at a variety of the different programs as we go into this. Now, I'm actually on the home screen. Let me move these boxes for a second. I'm gonna close the chat out. And move that, there we go. I wanna make sure I don't interrupt your view. On my home screen, and it doesn't matter if you're using biology, physics, chemistry, all of the programs are gonna look like this. 
Anatomy and physiology, if you have the newer version, it will also look like this on your home screen. When you click in, you're going to notice that we've broken these courses down into four levels. That's really important for all of you. The first one are the program level resources. These are things that go over the whole program. They're not specific to a unit, a module, a lesson, but they belong to that whole program. The second thing you're going to see is you're going to see units. Those units are the big chunks of content. So you notice in biology, I'm going to have ecology, the cell, genetics, history of biological diversity, diversity of life, and the human body. Now, under the, anything at the unit level, like the STEM project, is going to be at this level. If I open a unit up, you're going to see modules. And then finally, anything at the module level will be there. Finally, you're going to see your lessons. Anything used at a lesson level, like a lab or so on, is going to be found at that lesson level. So the structure of all these programs is unit, module, lesson. And we're going to highlight that for you in a minute. But if I go to, if I scroll up, and I go to my program resources and click on that, you're going to notice when that screen comes up, I have a variety of resources that go to the whole program. So here's my course planning, my three-dimensional assessment guide. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But these professional learning resources right here can be a huge help to you. So if I scroll down, I just want you to see what's here. First of all, there is a quick start course. If you are new to Inspire Science, this is an e-learning course, just like you would take online. If you click into this, there are pieces about using the planner, about navigating the course. All those kinds of resources are built into this quick start. When you start to use the assessments, you're going to notice right here, you have another course on using the assessments and reporting with your students. That includes the digital assessment. So if you're remote right now, I would highly suggest you get in here. There is a digital walkthrough. This is just a video, it takes you through the whole platform. And then right here, digital help, how to use your program. I cannot stress enough how important it is for you to know this because we're gonna cover a lot of these things this morning or for you this afternoon. But what you're going to notice is that you're going to pick up two or three things, and a lot of it you're going to have to come back and review. And here's where you want to come back in and review it. And then underneath, some of the new um, NGSS standards focuses. So 5E instructional model, that's how this program is built. Three-dimensional learnings, you're going to notice the e library, uh, the video libraries and the e-course. And then if I scroll down, inquiry, formative assessment, engineering design, supporting different levels of learners, and especially for right now, blended learning and purposeful technology. All of this is available to you 24-7 that you can access. And I'm going to show you one other thing before I leave here, because we've already had one question about this this morning. I'm going to, right here, you have a help menu. If I click on my profile and go to help, that's going to open up our digital technical support. So how to use your master codes, how to log in, how to get started. There are actually some things on here for students and parents that you can use about using the platform. Um, how to use it with Google Classroom. I mean, you have all of this built in in that help menu. And so I just want you to know you have a ton of resources outside of what we're doing this morning. But I'm going to click back over. And we're going to move forward and highlight in the program. Now, what we talk about today, we'll go to any of these courses. So I noticed when we asked, I had people teaching physics, chemistry, and biology. For high school, we also have our earth science course. We also have physical science and physical science with earth. Everything we discuss today will apply to all of those programs. So I just want to make sure that you're aware of that. Also, I want you to know that these programs, regardless of your situation right now, can be used the way that you need them. So if you're back in class, if you're going to have the students live in front of you, you have the print materials and you can use them just like you normally would, hopefully, hopefully pulling in some of those NGSS resources. If you're in a hybrid classroom where they're remote part of the time and you're having you doing digital part of the time, I want you to know you can use it in that way. 
And then lastly, if you're in the digital classroom, everything that we have can be used digitally for the students. Now, one thing that's really important to know both right now and for the future is there is a free app that goes along with these programs called the Read Anywhere app. It is available for, uh, on the Google Play and on the App Store. It works on tablets and on smartphones, whether they're Android or Apple. And when students download this free app, if they have their student subscription, they can actually bring up the whole book and interact with it on their device, and it actually fits the device. So they can download a module at a time and actually have that on the device to use. So I'm going to really recommend the Read Anywhere app. Again, you're going to notice what it looks like, a free download, and it will allow your students access to the materials that they have. So don't forget that one. And then one other one I just want to bring up, we do have a, a really strong integration with Google Classroom. If you're using Google Classroom, I'll touch on that today. And then in the chat box, if you don't mind just jumping in there real quick and putting in, just to let me know, are you using Google Classroom? Just a quick yes or no in the chat box. Okay, great. I appreciate that, guys. A number of you are, a few of you aren't. So I'm going to, when we go through this, I will show you in the tech how to connect it to your Google Classroom and then also how to use the assignments in there. We won't spend a lot of time on that, but I do want you to know it's available. And in that help menu I showed you a minute ago, there's a lot of resources um, that are built in for that, okay? You don't need to use Google Classroom. You can actually do it all right through the platform, the McGraw-Hill platform, but we want you to know that's available for you. So any device you wanna pick this up on, all web-based, you can use it with that. It's gonna be really helpful to you. So. We're gonna jump into these, take a look at it. We're gonna start out just briefly designed for three-dimensional learning. And what I mean by that, that three-dimensional learning is pulling together the DCIs, which are the disciplinary content ideas. That's what all of us are used to as the standards. The second one are those science and engineering practices called SEP in the Next Generation Science Standards. There are eight of those like creating arguments, using evidence, using models. You're gonna find those built in. And the third one in the green down below is called CCCs. Those are the cross-cutting concepts. Those are things like structure and function, patterns, energy, and you're gonna see how that all ties in. But we did some things in the program that may be a little bit different than what you're used to just in a traditional science book. Now, all the content is still here. But what we've done is we've tried to tie the three of these together because to be very honest with you, when our students go into a science career or if they're trying to understand science today, they're going to learn some of these ideas, but they're gonna forget a lot of them. Really in the workforce and in a career, these two pieces, these science and engineering practices, the way that we do science are so important for our students to have and then those cross-cutting concepts down below are the big ideas that tie science together and help students understand how important science is. So we're gonna try, tie those things together. And some of the ways that we've done this, in your teacher's edition, as you start every single module, you're going to notice the main standard highlighted for you includes all three of these pieces. So students will explore content and develop skills leading to the mastery of the following performance expectations and applying practices project called ecological pyramid. So here's the actual standards. Use a mathematical representation to support claims. That's the science and engineering practice. Four, the cycling. So cycles is one of the cross-cutting concepts around matter and flow of energy among organisms in an ecosystem. So that cycling of matter and, um, among organisms in an ecosystem from biology, that's the disciplinary content idea. And then you're gonna see down below exactly how that ties out in each one of those three areas with some really detailed information for you. So I just wanna encourage you, take a look at that. Um, it really helps you tie the three pieces together. 
and you're going to be able to pull those out all across. The other thing you're going to notice all through the program in your teacher's edition, we're going to break out those three pieces, the blue, science and engineering practice, the orange, the disciplinary content idea, and the green is the cross-cutting concepts. So it will be a big help to you and your students. And then we're going to call out the different pieces throughout the TE for you and in the student edition to support them. So you're going to see these pulled out throughout with a specific example on how to use those science and engineering practices and those cross-cutting concepts along with the disciplinary ideas that are built in. Another thing we've done for you at the unit level, you're going to notice this unit storyline. And here's what we mean by a storyline. Often when we teach, students don't understand or make a connection between the science we're teaching in high school and then how that applies to life. So one of the big changes in NGSS and the way it's been integrated into this program is the use of phenomenon and then those, how those phenomena tie into a big story. And let me just give you one quick example around this. If you walk into class and you told your students, we're going to learn, let's say it's chemistry, we're going to learn about stoichiometry today, would they be excited or not? And I'm going to tell you, the answer is most of them would not be because they don't even know what stoichiometry is and they don't know how it applies to life or what it does. So what we're trying to do in all of these programs, physics, biology, chemistry, is we're trying to tie the science concept around a question that would tie into life. So in this one, how do plant cells function to keep a plant alive? Or you could replace that with how do human cells function to keep you alive? I mean, that's the, really that storyline is what we're doing to try to si tie the science to the life of the student. And then we break that down, and in each module, what are they going to learn about that ties back to this bigger question for the unit? The whole point of this is to give the student a reason to learn the science. So you're going to see that tied out, and then you're also going to see some of the things that we've done to help students get involved. One, we're going to look at the formative assessment probes that start each unit. You're going to have a highlight for you about what phenomenon are tied into the unit and then into every single module. So you're going to have a unit phenomenon, and then we're going to tie that to the module structure they go in. And every one of the module phenomenon tie back to this big idea. So notice this one here. How does the ocean chemistry affect coral reefs? And then when we go into the different areas that we're looking at in chemistry, we're going to tie it back to this overarching phenomenon. And I'll give you some specific examples of that. The other idea we would love for you to try out is the driving question board. And here's what we mean by that. If I back up just for a second and we looked at this phenomenon, how does the ocean chemistry affect coral reefs? Um, you think about it, where you guys live, your students are all around water. In in the Red Sea, in the Mediterranean Sea, in the Persian Gulf. I mean, you, there's water all around them. And one of the questions for all of us is how does ocean chemistry affect coral reefs? T typically, we have a tendency as teachers to ask this question and then just move on with the science. And really what we want to do is we want the students to be generating their own questions. So thinking about how chemistry affects coral reefs what questions would you like to ask? And by the way, teachers, if you want to jot this down, right now, if I were in class, it would be easy to do this. I could put a chart paper up on my board, or I could have them do it. I could have them write their questions down around this bigger idea and put them on my board or on the chart paper. That's a little more difficult to do remotely. But one of the great tools that's out there, actually, I'll give you two different ones. If you haven't used Padlet, P-A-D-L-E-T -E yet, great tool to do a driving question board with, okay? The other one is called Linoit, L-I-N-O-I-T. These are both free open ed resources. Linoit looks just like this. Looks like a board and they have sticky notes and they can throw their sticky notes right up in class. So you could put the question right here what changes in open chemistry 
might have left coral reefs vulnerable to bleaching and other harm. You can put a question up there and students can throw their sticky notes right up on the board and you can save that and then change it around and readapt it. So these are some ways that we built in to help students actually do that. So the driving question board is one of those. It's a great strategy. The other one is using a summary table and applying evidence. So we're going to give you some highlights on that when we go through it. And then one thing that we built in throughout, please take note of this, it ties directly into the science and engineering practices. Every module is going to encourage you to do a claim evidence reasoning. And what that means is the students look at that phenomenon and what they're going to do is they're going to make a claim about it. And then everything you go through in that module, when they do a lab, if they do applying practices, if they do it, they're looking for evidence to either support or refute their claim. And then online, we actually have the chart that they can use to do their claim, to gather their evidence, and then to support their claim with reasoning, whether they're debunking that claim or whether they're agreeing with that claim. So you're going to see all of this built in to support you as you work through the program. Now, these formative assessment probes, they were written by Paige Keeley. They are at the unit level in all of the high school programs. And these are a great way to do two things. Number one, they're a great way to build student understanding of what, um, to, for you to see what students understand about the current topic that you're getting ready to go into, okay? The second thing they do is they're great at generating student discourse or student discussion in your class. So the one on the right-hand side right here, there are many ways that energy can be described. Put an X next to any of the statements that describe energy. So energy is the ability to cause change. Energy is the ability to do work. And really what students are going to do, they're going to X everyone off, but the most important part of this probe is the bottom right here. Explain your thinking. How would you describe energy? So they have to justify the ones that they're checking off here. The one on the left-hand side is out of chemistry. What happens to mass when matter changes? So mass comes in all shapes and sizes, can go through changes. Circle what you think happens to the total mass of a substance in each of these changes. So they're going to look at each one. And then in each one, they're going to identify which of these things they think happens to the mass. And then again, they're going to have to explain their thinking. This is going to start out every one of the units, and it's built into it. So let's go ahead and jump into a structure of the unit. And one other thing I want to mention before we do that. This may apply to you. It may not. In the States, um, high school science is being taught two ways under NGSS. It's either being taught as a four-course model. A four-course model means students would take biology, they would then take chemistry, physics, and they would also so take an earth science course. Some of our schools in the U.S. are doing a three-course model, and what they're doing then is they're integrating earth science into biology, chemistry, and physics. And I just want you to know at McGraw-Hill, what we've done is in those of you that teach biology, chemistry, or physics, we have integrated specific earth science modules into the content online. Those are just an option for you. When you go in, it's going to include the standards from the NGSS. It's going to include unit projects that are earth oriented. There are going to be some digital earth science lessons. They're going to be applying practices activities, and then there's going to be earth science connections throughout. And I'm going to show you where to find that. When you go into the pacing at the beginning of your course, some of your modules, like this one is chemistry, you're going to notice right here, unit one, structure and properties of matter, property and changes, structure of atom, electrons and atom, periodic table, just what you'd expect to find. And then there's an associated module on plate tectonics that you could use. Now, you don't have to use this. I just want you to know it's there, okay? That's done throughout biology, chemistry, and physics. So if you want to integrate the earth science in, you can do that. So let's look at a lesson walkthrough. We're going to start out with the unit opener. That unit opener is going to start out 
with a phenomenon. So in this one, you're gonna notice it's gonna start out with how do fireworks get their color? We're gonna mention that driving question board. We're gonna mention looking for evidence with the claim evidence reasoning. But the real thing is we're also integrating a STEM unit project that really makes the science real. Now, another note I would love for you to jot down. You may not do this every unit, but you need to do this two or three times a year because this is the way that we know if a student really understands the science. So in this one, optimize battery chemistry. Investigate a real-world application of chemical reactions battery and propose a way to optimize their potential and maximize their electrical output. And then online, we have all of the resources that you need to do this project with your students, including a student and teacher facing rubric that goes along with it. That unit project is going to be at the unit level and it's gonna be built out for them, okay? So we have the probes at the unit level. Notice this one, how much do bubbles weigh and they have to select the best graph. Um, so you're gonna see this throughout and you're going to have the teacher notes that go along with it. You're going to have the STEM project, you're going to have a STEM video, and then that overarching phenomenon. So I'm gonna stop just for a question, and uh, I'm gonna ask you guys any, any questions that have come in the Q&A so far, guys, relating to NGSS or what we've talked about so far. I'm Sharish or Afsana, I'm gonna take that as a no. No, we haven't received anything. Yet. Great, okay, so let's go ahead. We'll jump into a module then. Now remember, if I'm in my program, and I'm gonna come back over here, the materials are done by program, unit, module, and lesson. Now I'm gonna click online just before I go into the module and I'm gonna click on that unit level. I'm in biology right now. And if I scroll down, you're going to see the resources that go along with what we just talked about. So unit planning and presentation resources. If I click that open and I scroll down just a little bit, here's my PowerPoint for the unit. By the way, this is regular PowerPoint. You can download this in unit. Here's my probe, here's my STEM project, my rubric, and then here's my three course model instruction that, and my resources that go along with this unit, and here's my pacing that goes along with it. Now with any of these materials, you're gonna notice these are teacher materials. It highlights that because it has answer keys so you don't give it out to your students. If I click down though to my learning resources, and I open this up and scroll down, here are my student versions. So if I wanna look at the probe that goes along with this, I can click this right here, and it's gonna open up that probe that goes along with this unit. Organisms interact with their environment to obtain energy. Put an X next to any of the ways that the energy moves through an ecosystem so they make their choices, and explain your reasoning. Now, I went full screen with this. If I exit full screen, you'll notice when I go up to the top, I have a download button right here. So if I wanna download it onto my device, I can. One other thing I'll notice in here with any of these resources that are for the student, okay? Here's my video that goes along with this one. I just want you to know if you're in a remote setting right now, you can do four things with any of these resources. Now again, this is something that you might wanna jot down. There are four different things you can do with these resources. Number one, I can click right here and I have the option either to make it visible to students or to hide it from my students. If I decide this unit, I'm not going to do the project, I can click right here and say, hide this from the students it will not be on their page digitally. If I wanted to have it, click your drop down menu and put show to students. Notice that tells me this is on their student page for the unit. 
The second thing you can do, you click right here, you can add this to your calendar. So I'm gonna click this on my calendar. That's the STEM unit project. We're gonna start this project today, but I want them just to be on their calendar because we're gonna work on this for a few weeks until September 25th. And then all I do is say add. Notice now on this tile, it actually shows me this is on the student calendar. I'll explain what that means in a minute. It's a quick way for them to get to this resource without having to go through every step, okay? Number three, I can add it to a presentation. So you have a streaming presentation. If you click this button right here, it is now in the presentation at this unit level and you notice at the top of my page, I can launch my presentation right here. So it's a great way to show it. Not only is it in my presentation, whatever I put in the presentation is a great way for students because they also have this presentation button. They can go in the presentation for them to content after you're done. And then finally, I can assign this out to my students. This is especially important right now so if I scroll down, here's the science probe. Here are the start dates. Here's my due date. You can change those. With remote learning, um, please make sure you do this. In remote learning, please make sure you give them clear instructions on what you want them to do. So you would put that in here. Which students do you want it to go to? If it's something they're going to have to submit a file for, do you want them to have to submit something as a file back to you? I'm gonna check that because I want them to submit this back to me. Now, if it was an assessment, I don't need to check that because it's automatically gonna be submitted. How many points is this worth? I'm gonna give this 15. What kind of assignment is it? Okay. Um, I have not set my grade book up yet, so I only have assignments. You can set up assessment, quiz, participation, you can put your own categories in. If I have multiple classes, I can actually assign it out to all of my classes at the same time. And then I'm gonna scroll down and I'm going to say assign. And you'll notice this tells me this has been assigned to my students for these dates right here. Now, let me click back over to the chat. Um, there were two questions that just came in. Can we download these resources or the textbook or can they just be online soft copies? The textbook itself cannot be downloaded just because of copyright issues, but like a lot of these pre-sources, like if I click into the probe right here, you're gonna notice right at the screen, I've got my download arrow. Any of these documents like this can be downloaded and used. And then the second question, which was a great question, can these be linked to Google Classroom? And the answer to that is yes. And while I'm here, let me just show you how to do that real quickly. So you'll notice I just assigned out the science probe. And so there's just one more step for Google Classroom. If I go right here to my assignments and I look at those, there's my science probe. It shows me when I assigned it, when it's due, okay? It shows me it's open right now. That means students can work on it. If I go right down here by this assignment to these three dots and click on it, there we go. One of the options is to share this with my Google Classroom. And so right here with any assignment, just go to the assignment once you've done it, and then right here, share it with Google Classroom. And it will actually be linked to your Google Classroom account. You can go right in and do that. Um, Really, uh, it's a great way to utilize both of those. Now, do you have to use Google Classroom? No, you don't, because you know what? It's already been assigned out to your students right in McGraw-Hill. So totally choice on your part in order to do that. So let's just review really quickly with this piece. Number, you can do four things with any of these student-facing materials. Number one, you can assign it. Button's right here. Number two, you can add it to your presentation. Number three, you can either make it visible or hide it from students. 
And notice now, once you've assigned it, I can actually review results from here. And then the last one, I can put it on my calendar. Notice right here, I can add it to the calendar. Now, as a teacher or as a student, one last thing I'm going to show you uh, before we go on. Not the last thing I'm going to show you, but if I go back to my dashboard, before this segment was blank, notice now, here's my probe, these are my assignments, and then down below, here's that STEM unit project I just added that's available. This is also going to show up on your students page. And the reason this is beneficial, right here they know what's assigned, but down below, if I want them to do this STEM project, but it's not an assignment, they can click right here and then go right to this. They don't have to go through their unit, all that kind of stuff. It just takes them directly to it. These resources, this assigned, add to calendar, this is so important for remote learning right now because it gets the students directly to the materials that, that you want them to use. So just remember that as we're going through it. We're going to come back to this, but before we do, I want to take you back to um, the, the structure of the program, okay? So I'm watching the time. We're about halfway done. I'm going to go through this module opener, and then we're going to stop for a few minutes of Q&A um, and then move on. At the beginning of the module, I'm going to tell you this. We have the unit opener, creates that storyline, has that STEM project, all of those good things, has the probe. Please use those. They are really powerful for your students. But the core part of the instruction is going to happen in the module. You want to think module, chapter, they're kind of interchangeable. This is an example of a module, okay? We're looking in physics at displacement and force in two dimensions. That's kind of the, the DCI or the content idea. Here is the phenomenon. Why is the specialized train washing the train tracks? Now you can notice in the image here, there's a visual of the water that's coming out of the train that's actually washing the train track. So why is that washing the train track? With every one of these, you're going to have a phenomenon video that goes along with it. That can be assigned out to students. It can be watched if you're in class. It can be watched in whole group. One comment I will make teachers, if you're in a remote situation right now, don't use your time in a Zoom lesson or an online meeting with your students to watch the video. Have them do that offline. Use your time online to do only the things that center around student discussion or helping them understand the ideas that you're working with, okay? You're gonna notice the claim evidence reasoning here. Make a claim about why the train is washing the tracks. Everything you go through from now on, start collecting evidence and see if it supports or denies your claim. And then look at your reasoning. I so much strongly suggest. And then here's some resources you can use to explore this claim. You're going to have an explore opportunity in lesson two, looking at friction. You're going to be able to look at inclined planes in lesson two. You're going to have some additional resources like these Smithsonian videos that you can use to help you gather that evidence and understand these concepts. So this is that big idea, though, that phenomenon that we're wanting to tie the science to real life. Please, we've got the image. We've got the video that goes along with it. Please use those resources to help your students. Here's another example in chemistry. The big phenomenon, what's matter made of? And then go online to watch a video about the size of an atom. Now, it's not about answering questions, it's about raising questions that gives them access to do it. So I'm gonna go through a lesson really quickly, or a module really quickly for you. Number one, this one is biology. What could you see if you use a microscope? So this is looking at cell structure and function. I'm gonna start out, I've got that online video that's available, and the video again, these are not long. This one's about three minutes long. It actually then helps students think about cells and what they might look like, structure and function, but it's not to give them all the answers to the questions. Then I wanna use that claim evidence reasoning and talk about some of the things that they can do to go through and understand this concept and use that evidence. When I get into a lesson, and just remember, unit, module, core piece of instruction, inside of that module, you have your lessons. Inside of that module, you're going to have a focus question. 
What are the structures and functions found in prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells? We're used to that. But how can I use this lesson to tie it back to that overarching phenomenon? At the bottom, you're going to notice the tray. I'm going to call this a tray we have for the students. Make sure when you look through this, when you look at the visuals, that you're collecting evidence, but also down at the bottom, here are some things that are available to do to do that. Go online, look at these activities. There's a virtual investigation on communities and ecosystems. There's a cross-cutting concept activity on creating a table for the cross-cutting concepts. Use these to help students understand, and again, all of these can be assigned out when we go into it. So I have my focus question, I have my online materials that help me go through. When you're going through the student edition, make sure you go in and look for those resources, okay? In order to do that, you're also going to notice a whole series of lab activities that you have available inside of those lessons and that module. They're gonna range from something like this, a quick investigation. You're gonna have a launch lab. You're gonna have, this one's chemistry. You're gonna have your chem lab or your bio lab or your physics lab that are more full scale labs, okay? You're gonna have your solve it pieces or real world biology or those types of things which are real world application. And one of the pieces you're going to have during this lab is called applying practices. And I'm going to stop for a second. Do me a favor. In the chat right now, what I would like you to do, we say that the next generation science standards, the NGSS, have three dimensions. Put in the chat box, what are those three dimensions? You can just throw one up if you want. You can throw all three up. What are the three dimensions within three-dimensional learning? The SEPs, yes, which stands for what? Somebody tell me what SEP stands for. DCI, good. CCC, those are the three. What do those three stand for? Cross-cutting concepts, yes. Science and engineering practices. Disciplinary content ideas, guys, thanks. I really appreciate that. This one here, these applying practices focus directly on the science and engineering practices, but they really go deep for a student. So I want you to look at this. Modeling energy at different scales, okay? Right here, a cup of water is left outside for several hours in the heat of a summer day. Your students could relate to this, that heat of the summer day. It is then brought into an air-conditioned room. Develop a model that illustrates the changes in thermal energy at the water molecules in the cup at both a macroscopic scale and at a particular, at a particle scale. This worksheet will help you plan, develop, and execute your model. Modeling is one of the science and engineering practices. And here, I'm, I'm just going to tell you guys, this right here will tell you if your students actually understand what thermal energy does, and it will also help you understand, do they understand structure and energy? So when I go through this one, in your words, describe what practices it'll illustrate, what type of model will you use, sketch a prototype. When they go into this a little bit, they're also going to get this. What's the difference in the kinetic energy of the water molecules when the cup is outside and when it's in the air condition? Can you use your model to show water boiling or freezing, why or why not? Think about that. That's a huge piece that's built into this. So if I back up just for a second, okay? You've got a whole variety of series of types of investigation. Now, I'm gonna stop one for a second here and mention, if you're in a remote setting right now, it is harder to do some of these. This solve it mystery is not hands-on, it's a thought experience. Might be better to use this one right now. Or maybe you want to record yourself with a video cam looking, doing the first part of this lab, creating a data table, and then making the students use what they saw in that lab video and the data, and then making them apply it to the rest of the questions that go along with the lab. I know we have to be creative right now, that might be example, or actually finding one that's already been done for you online. You then have the applying practices, 
in chemistry and physics, you're going to have some great problem sets to support your students. And again, just think about some of the ways that they can do this. In this example problem for the students, we're always going to have the blue coaching notes that go along with them, help them understand what they're doing. And then along with that, there's always going to be practice problems. Now notice, I've got the practice problems here. I have a challenge. I'm always going to have a ch challenge. These follow every single example that's worked out. And one idea here for remote learning too, is instead of having the students just jot their answers down, maybe they have to answer the homework, but you assign a specific problem that they have to use an app like Show Me to actually work that problem out as a video and submit it to you on a Padlet so you can hear their working out of that problem because that will help really help you know if they understand it or not. But these practice problem sets are really helpful. And then in every program, you had a set of a virtual legation. So between the hands-on labs, the applying practices, the problem sets, the virtual investigations, the FET simulations that are built in, and I know many of you use FET, we have some that are built into the program right now, and the web quests, which are web searches, between all of these activities that you have to choose from, your students can be looking for evidence to understand the science, but then also to, to justify their claim as they explain that phenomenon. Okay. Got a ton of things built in. This one's a biology one on kelp farming, looking at it to be able to do, and so they have to go through the web quest, be able to build all of that in to help them understand and apply the science. So please take some time. Now, one warning. Please do not use all of these in one module. Okay? There's no way you can do that. Pick and choose, but use a variety. Okay? Now, I'm going to stop again just for a second. I'm going to check the chat and go into this. So I want to see, um, Therese, Rasan, are there any other questions, any questions in the Q&A box? Yes, there's go one. Ahead. Do we have animated videos or videos to support the lesson? Yes, and so I'm going to show you that in just a second. And then one of the other ones that, um, that I had in the chat was about what about ELs? I always have to explain the vocabulary, okay? And so let me move forward right here. One of the things we're going to do, you're going to see a strong macro to micro in the visual literacy pieces, helping them see that structure. But along with that, there are a ton of videos that are built in into the program that are in the resources. So you have the unit opening video that's with the phenomenon. You have the module phenomenon video, but then you also have animations and videos that are built into the program to help students understand. Just remember right now, these could be assigned out. They can not only be assigned out, they can be put on the calendar and they can be put in your presentation that the students have access to. Please don't use class time, especially if you're remote. Don't use the remote class time to show the videos. Have the students use the videos on their own, and then use your time with the students to discuss them. Okay, that's built in. For the vocabulary, you're going to see a couple different things. You're going to see a lot of support inside of the student edition around academic vocabulary, around word origins, around definitions that are built in to help students get a grip on that vocabulary because such a big deal. And you're going to see cross-curricular connections that are built into the program to support your students. Now, for my biology teachers especially, I just want to mention one of the other things you have to support your students is you have a piece called the Reading Essentials, which is a lower level reader of the biology program. So that might be a big support for your ELs help with that, but you're going to see these cross-curricular connections. You're also going to see the get it. The get it is just to stop and check. And this is might something you want to bring into that on class time. So guys, you read this. Let me know if you get it. What's the role of lysosomes and cells? What do they do? Okay. And be able to use that to create the discourse that's built into it. 
So you're going to see that, that vocabulary built in throughout the student edition and the career connections that are built in, again, to help students follow up on that. And then finally, in the review, you're going to see some of those resources, and we're going to take some time to look at Learn Smart. But what that does then is bring you to the end of a lesson, and then when we come to the end of the module, you're going to see this module wrap up. So you remember we started out with the phenomenon and the claim evidence reasoning. We're going to wrap it up, and then we're going to remind them about that STEM project. So if you're doing the STEM project for that unit, let's stop and think about some planning you could do and how you could apply that to the STEM project. And then finally, if you want to take them a little bit further, there's always a go further opportunity at the end of every module. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop there for a second. I'm going to go back online, and let's look at some of those resources and how they're tied to that module. So I'm going to click back over online. Remember, if I go in the browse here, you're going to have program level, unit level, which we looked at, and in a unit. Okay. I'm going to go down to, let's say, the cell. Inside of that unit, I'm going to have four modules. So for what we're doing right now, let's click on cell structure and function. And at that module level, I'm going to scroll down a minute. So my module planning and presentation resources, learning resources, the module opener, the module wrap up, module assessment, and the module library. In module planning and presentation, if I click that open, here is my teacher edition digitally for this specific module. Here's my answer key. We're going to look at the science notebook in a minute. Here's my answer key for the science notebook and the reading essentials. I scroll down a little bit more. Here's my PowerPoint for this module. Again, this can be downloaded, just a regular PowerPoint, guys. All right? These are my teacher-only resources. If I click on here, you'll notice there is no option to share this with the students. There is no option to assign this because it is a teacher-only piece. Right? We don't want you to accidentally share the answer key. Learning resources. Here's the module structure and function. This is the actual ebook for the students for this whole module. They can click in. It's right here. You can assign this. You can put it in the presentation. Here's the science notebook for this one. And I'm going to click this science notebook open just for a second. I want to make sure you understand that you have this. This is a downloadable piece right here. This is for the whole module. That's why it's 17 pages long. And if I click into this, you're going to notice students can actually type right into this, wherever you, I don't know on your screen, but you can see kind of the boxes shaded. I can click into this. Students can actually fill this out digitally right now. So it's going to use a KWL to start with. And then if I page down on this, it's going to jump into some of the vocabulary for them. It really helps that vocabulary support at the beginning. And then it actually helps them pull the ideas together. So identify the three main ideas of the cell theory. Write a short sentence describing each one. Summarize the information about electron microscopes. So this is going right along with each one of those lessons inside of that module. Compare and contrast eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells by putting phases in the Venn diagram. Okay, so I'm going to click in here, and I can actually respond to this. I can click down here in my text and respond to that. So it allows students to actually pull their information together. It's a big support for the DCI materials, but then pulling in those bigger ideas. Now, um, really quick in the chat, if I wanted my students to have this right here, the science notebook, what are the three ways using this that I could get it to them? Okay, I wanted my students to have the science notebook piece what are the three different ways I could give them access to it? Putting you on the spot here. You didn't know I was going to quiz you, did you? Just in the chat, three different ways I could get it to it. Put it on the calendar. Yes, that's one way. I could put it on the calendar. 
What about a second way? I could assign it, correct. I can assign it. There's a third way. Anybody know what that one is? Add it to the presentation, excellent, okay? And actually, there's a fourth way, so I didn't even throw that one up there. One, I could assign it right here. The second one, I could add it to the calendar. The third one, I could add it to the presentation. And then the fourth one, I could just make it visible to the students on their page. Remember, we've already done that for you. If you're not gonna use it, go right here and hide it. When it doesn't say visible, this would not be on the student page, okay? So that's a couple of those resources that are built in there. In my module opener, you're gonna see encounter the phenomenon. That's in my presentation right now, but you know what? I'm gonna assign this out because I want my students to have it. This is um, 10 points. I'm just gonna make it a participation. All my students are gonna get it. I'm not, uh, just watch. Um, watch and be ready to discuss. And I'm gonna sign that out. And if I open this one up right here, what you're gonna notice in this is this is all the material. So you know what? If I click that open, cell structure and function, encounter the phenomenon, how have microscopes changed over time? Play the video to see the various stages and structures of an organism. So they're gonna go in and right here, they can click on that video and watch it. And students can actually then experience that. There we go. So they can go through, watch the video, and then we'd be ready to discuss when we come back. There is a transcript, there's closed caption here, and I can make it full screen. Now, I'm gonna pause that because through the WebEx, you're not gonna get the audio that goes along with it. Um, but the other thing too, just so you know if you needed it, I could click this open, and I can have my teacher notes available to me to actually look at what that idea is for the student. So I'm gonna close this one up. That's one of the videos, my claim evidence reasoning form is here. And then there's some additional resources. There's a module pretest. There's a launch lab to start this module with the answer key, okay? For the module wrap up, here's my go further activity with the answer key right after it. My module assessment. Here's my module test, my module vocab practice. Now. My module assessment, you're gonna notice when I look at it right here, this is in the digital version. So I can assign it here, but I would really recommend you assign it from assessments. We'll look at that in a minute. But I can go ahead and assign that if I want. And then I've got down below my module library, and this is some of the interactive video pieces, okay? You also notice I've got an enrichment activity, I've got a real world biology, so check that out. I'm gonna make a suggestion here, guys, that's really important. One of the things that you wanna make sure you do with your program, whether you're biology, physics, or chemistry, in the online book, go four places. Go to the program, check out every resource. Go to a unit, open every blade, check out every resource. Go to a module, open every blade, check out every resource. Open a lesson, check out every blade, open every resource. And the reason I say that then you'll know, like if I didn't do that right now, let me click this back and get over on my page. If I had not done that right now, I would not know that there was a PowerPoint. I wouldn't know my science notebook is here. I wouldn't know that I have this launch lab here, or I have these additional resources, or that I have my what my assessments were, or that I have in my module library that I've got a sponge lab connection, which is an OER connection, and I've got a video right here. I would know that I have my enrichment and my real world biology piece here. And these are great, great re application based resources that tie in all three dimensions, okay? We're gonna go one more place and we're gonna move on a little bit because there's two main other things that I wanna show you. I'm gonna go to a lesson. Let's go to um, cell transport. And at the lesson level, just remember unit module lesson, at the lesson level, I'm gonna go down and this lesson is based on the 5E lesson cycle. So lesson planning, presentation resources, these are specifically for you as a teacher. 
Again, teacher only. Here's my TE for this lesson, my science notebook, my reading essentials, my PowerPoint. I'm going to close that one up. Here are my learning resources, my student edition, my reading essentials. Please remember, this one is only in biology. Then we have smart book. I'm going to come back to that. That's one of the two other things I want to show you. Right? Then I go into my five E's. So here's my launch my lesson with my phenomenon. There's a video built into this, guys. So if I click that one open, I'm going to have all of my materials to start looking at the major idea of sale transport. Imagine you're studying in your room and you smell dinner rolls baking. It's a bread baked, the movement of the aroma from the kitchen in your room happened through a process called diffusion. There's a short video that's built in here for them to watch. Up at the top, it's going to tell me I have three pages that go along with this. After I watch the video, I'm going to think about it. What do I know? What do I want to know? Okay. And the students can click in here and really start generating their idea. And if I click right here and I want to see my teacher content, I can. If I want to turn it off, I can. Right? And then when I go to page three, watch out for these words. You've got some new vocabulary coming up. And that's going to also be in that science notebook. So I can look at each one of these pieces, explore and explain. I'm going to have now. Um, I do want to mention one thing. In a lot of these explore and explain, these are actually the content. Notice it says interactive content. These are the content out of their print um, SE, student edition. But in many of these, we've actually integrated in um, interactive materials. So like if I click into this one, this is part of their text on facilitated diffusion. I'm going to say OK. And I'm opening this as a teacher. That's why I have the answer blank right here. Go back a page. You're going to notice this content comes right out of their text. But built into it, I actually have some animation showing me what's happening. Now, there would be pictures in a book like this, but they wouldn't be animated. So I just want you to know that's in there. And then do you get it? Describe how sodium items get into the cell. And then as a teacher, I can show the answer to this, OK? Or I can hide that. And then I can actually bring my teacher content up that I want to see my teacher ideas that go along with this. This has two pages that go with it. So then there's a check that they can do, and they can actually respond to that check. That check is actually an online three online questions. If you assign this, you get the data from this. So if I showed you what this looked like, they would start the assignment. And here's my questions. A molecule that's important for cell function can't diffuse through the plasma membrane. It needs a protein that can open and close to allow the molecule to diffuse. What is this protein called? Let's call this a channel protein. And then I can go to the next question. I can go back and forth, and this is how the assessment questions look. Choose the answer in this one so I can pick the choice. And then I can go to the next question. If I want to go back, I can just go up to the top. I can see which ones I've answered and so on. But it's built in inside of that piece. And I'm going to close out of this. Let me submit this first. Yep, I didn't finish one, but I'm going to submit it anyway. And I'm going to close out. There we go. Okay. If I didn't open that, I wouldn't know all that stuff is inside of these Explore and Explains. Okay? There's an additional resources. Here's my applying practices. Here's my FET simulation that I can use. And again, any of these resources can be assigned, put in the calendar, put in the presentation. So I'm going to put the FET simulation in there. All right? Elaborate. This is expand on the ideas. So I have some interactive content around that. I evaluate. Here's my vocabulary flashcards for your students, my lesson check. And finally, here are my library resources. So these are some of the videos, simulations, and those kinds of things. And then one last thing I'll mention on this, teacher added resources. If you click this, you as a teacher can add anything you want from your computer or any web link, YouTube video, a Cells Alive link, a um, Khan Academy tutorial, 
you can grab the URL, you can put in a name, put the link in, add it, and it will show up as a tile just like this, just like anything McGraw-Hill has put in here, and you can do all the same things with it. Assign it, add it to the calendar, put it in the presentation, and so on, okay? Really great option for you to be able to use those things. On this page, the last thing I wanna to touch on is the presentation, and what do we mean by that? So if I go to launch presentation, remember, your students have access to this. What it tells me right now, I have 10 of those resources from this lesson in the presentation. The first one was that launch the lesson with that main concept and the video that we looked at a minute ago. It's got all three pages right here. So what do I know, what I wanna know, and so on, okay? And then I can go to my next resource. So my next resource is one of those explore and explains on passive transport and active transport, okay? And it allows me to look at it, go along, allows me to click on the definitions, okay, to see what that is. I can go to my next resource, and again, great way for the students to review the materials, anything that's built in. So like this one, is some background, the definition is here, my academic vocabulary. Click next to see the process diffusion. So you can drop a cube in purple water, uh, a cube of purple dye into water, which is similar to water environment of cell, the process of diffusion again. So if I click next, I can actually see the next step and what that diffusion looks like. I click next. I actually see the next step with what happens. And then that's the final step and then I can go down through. So we built a lot of interactivity into these explore and explains. And if I wanna see all the resources, you're gonna notice down here where it says open tray. If you click on the cube, it allows you to actually look at everything that's already in this presentation. Okay, so I know what I have in here by doing that. I can jump ahead if I want and so on. And I'm gonna click out. Finally, the last thing about the presentation is your edit button. If you click edit, it will show you every single thing in this, in this lesson. It'll show you the order they're in and it will allow you to add them or to remove them. So if I look at this and I thought, you know what, I wanna put the science notebook in here because I wanna go over it with my students, but I don't want it here. I actually want this at the end. So I wanna throw it all the way down here. because It's the last thing I wanna do with the students um, before I finish that presentation. And you know what, I think, I also want to add my, pets, my um, project here because I want to review that with them. But I'm going to put the project, um, I'm going to put the project right here. So you just see it allows you to edit, throw things in. It also allows you to remove things. I'm not going to do this um, present, uh, project, so I'm going to remove that. Right here from the edit, you can adjust this. Now let me, let me just finalize one thing for you. So I'm going to get out of that, that simulation. Oh, you know what, I actually closed my book. So right here, I'm gonna go back to Connect Ed and log in. Closed the wrong window, guys, sorry about that. This time, let's go to Chemistry. And I wanna go back to a lesson just for a second. So as you get the same structure, Unit Module Lesson. Let's go to Module Two on Matter. And then finally, let's go to lesson two on changes in matter, okay? Okay, so you'll see between this, regardless of which program you're using, the same structure. But one thing I do wanna to mention to you, if you want the students to do the work, like if I look at explore and explain, and I open one of these up, and if there's a widget in here that they can answer, and I actually want them to do it, what you want to do is assign it because then you can go in and see the work that they did. You don't really want them to do it in the presentation, okay? You don't want them to do it inside their presentation. 
you want them to do it inside the individual piece because it will be easier for you to look at it and grade it, okay? Anything they do in here is automatically saved for them, but it allows you then to go in and look at their work once they've completed it. And that's true of anything like the um, learning resources. If you're gonna use the science notebook with them, there we go. If you're gonna use the science notebook, go ahead and assign it out. That way, if you can go back and see it, if you don't wanna see it, just put it on their page or put it on their calendar, let them do it, okay? But if you wanna see it. So we're gonna to touch on two last things in the last 10 minutes. One of these is smart book. Now in a remote learning situation or for individual student work, there is nothing better in our program than smart book. It's an adaptive study tool for the students. I'm gonna click into it. There we go. Now, in order for your students to have this, you have to assign it out. When I go into SmartBook, it gives the student a choice right away. There are 12 concepts under Structure and Properties of Matter. For me to complete this, it takes an average time of 22 minutes. That's an average time. Just gives them an idea. I can either start with reading or start with questions. If I start with reading, what comes up is their student book. Now let me tell you about this student book. In this student book, we're gonna highlight for them the main ideas that are important in this section of text. So I'm gonna go to the next concept, so I'm in lesson three, I can look down, you know, at the variety of different pages on this. So I can go in and actually scroll down through my book and look at it. I can shrink it, make it smaller if I want. But I'm gonna go through and review this, the different parts of this, and then what I can do is go from page to page, and I'll actually find different segments of this highlighted for me as I work my way through the material. And then what I can do is I can go to my questions, okay? Now, the other button I have is I can go back and look at my concepts, and this will bring up the key concepts in the program, okay? The one that's in blue is the one I'm currently looking at. The ones in yellow are the ones that are highlighted all the time. So students can go in and look at those concepts that are included in the topic I'm doing. And then I can go to the questions. And when I'm in the questions, I'm gonna make progress by completing. The number of questions will vary on my needs. It's okay to get it wrong. I can still get 100% if I complete all the concepts. And submit your answer by selecting your confidence level. Okay, so I got that. And here's what it's mean. This one, I've got 12 concepts. In order for a concept to be mastered, it means I have to answer a couple questions right in a row about that concept which is a change that alters a substance without changing its composition. Nuclear change, chemical change, physical change. In the chat box real quick, put in there, do you think this is nuclear, chemical, or physical? I've got a physical. Anybody else? Physical. Well, let's check it, okay? And what is my confidence level? I'm pretty high on that one, okay? And it's gonna immediately tell me that was correct. Got it right, okay? I'm gonna go to my next question. Cutting paper, crumpling foil, and boiling water are all examples of, now, I want you to notice before I answer that, right up here in my 12 concepts, you'll notice the first one is half filled in. I'm gonna get this one right again. We're gonna call this, Physical, somebody threw that in the chat box, good. I'm gonna say I'm high on that one, okay? And it tells me I'm correct. Go to the next question, okay? The transition of matter from one state to another is a, what kind of change? Let's say physical change, and I'm gonna say medium on that one. Okay, phase or physical, okay, good deal. One more question, and now I'm gonna get a couple wrong, okay? You're gonna notice it's started to fill up some of my concepts right here, 
That last concept was on phase, even though it's physical change, all right? The term boil, freeze, condense, vaporize, and melt, but not the term cut and break, generally referred to a, I'm gonna say nuclear experiment, okay? Do I have a high, medium, or low? I'm gonna say I'm low on this one, and it will actually tell me, now I did not get this right, the correct answers were phase and change, if I need help, review these concepts. And notice right here, at any point in time, I can click read, and it will take me right to the text about that idea, and then I can go back to my questions, okay? I'm gonna go to the next question, and notice here, even before I answer the question, I can still go read about it. If I don't know this, this is not a test, it's a study tool. If I don't know this, I can go right to read about the concept, I can read about that. I can go back to the questions, okay? What is the process involves one or more substance changing into new substances? Let's call this chemical change. I'm gonna say medium, and I got that one correct. Now, watch this, one last thing here. I'm gonna get several wrong in a row, okay? Uh, is a nuclear, okay? I'm gonna say I had a high confidence level. Oh, no, I got that one wrong. Okay, let's go to the next one, which refers to physical changes. Um, let's say burning. Okay, we got a medium level. Oh, I got that one wrong. Notice what does here now. Before moving on, before I can do another question, you must review a resource for this question. So I'm going to review a resource. Okay, read about the concept. It's going to take me back and talk about what phase change is, okay? So I'm just gonna tell you guys, this is a great, great tool, but remember, before students can see this, what do you have to do? Throw it in the chat box for me. What do you have to do before students can see this? Assign it, exactly, you have to assign it. And you can do that at a couple different levels. If I go to the module and I scroll down, close the chat box for a second so you can see, and I scroll down under learning resources, you're gonna see Learn Smart. I can assign it out for the whole module, or if I go to a lesson, I can assign it out from the lesson level as well, and it's always gonna be under learning resources. Just click assign. You can assign it right out from here, okay? I got two minutes left, and then I'm gonna, I'll stay on for some Q&A, but I, I wanna go last one to assessments. Now, you will see the assessments at the unit level, the module level, and so on, but as I told you, I would not assign them out from there. You want to assign the assessments out from the assessment bank because it gives you more options. If you scroll down, we're in Kim. You're going to notice it's done by module. If I open one of these folders up, I got my checks, my lesson checks. Those are all lesson level. I then have my module test and my module vocab practice. Right from this level, if I want to use it just as it is, I can click right here and I can assign it or I could go right here and edit it. When you edit it, you can add your own questions. You can do all that stuff. All right, uh, you can preview it to see what it looks like, or if you just click on it like this, it'll open up and actually bring up every single question. You can tell the kind of question, how many points. If you scroll your cursor over it, it'll actually open the question up and show it to you. And you can see exactly what those questions look like. You could go into this test, you could click it open, and when you click on a specific question, you can edit that question, or you can remove that question. Okay, so it allows you a lot of freedom. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go up here and go back one level. And I'm just going to assign one of these real quick. And this is why I'm gonna tell you to assign it from here. Start date, due date. Do you wanna make it visible? And all that means is do you want students to know the test is coming before this date and time? They can't open it, but they'll see it's on the list. What category is it? What's their time limit? 
If I can go here and set any of these time limits, I'm gonna give them 60 minutes. Now, um, the other thing, do I wanna share this with Google Classroom? Right from this page, you can put, put it in your Google Classroom. What do I want my students to see? Okay. And if there are explanations associated with the questions, do I want to be able to see that? Do I want to show the reason on their score sheet? And then down below, don't miss this, student settings. If you click that open, there's a whole bunch of options for you, okay? And a feedback, can they check their answers? Not on a test, but if it was a practice, maybe I'd do that. Do I want to change the introduction? Which tools do I want them to have? We give them these three automatically, but if I'm in chemistry or physics, I could give them a calculator and I want them to have the scientific one. I'm gonna allow them to have text to speech so they can hear it. Down at the bottom, I'm gonna let them cross out answers. So if it's multiple choice, they can actually eliminate answers. I do wanna randomize the way the questions come up for the students if they're doing digital. Yeah, I'm having trouble with my click buttons. You're gonna be able to then go, um, okay, any changes upon my assessments because I went in to change something, that was fine. So I'm gonna go back to my dashboard right now and then stop just for a second, I wanna bring it up. So let's review really quickly. I know I'm at time, I'm actually one minute over. Okay, let's review really quickly. Most important things you ought to be thinking about beginning of school year. Number one, this high school program has been redesigned to include NGS elements, the three-dimensional learning aspects in it. Unit level phenomena, that unit STEM project, which makes them integrate of all of that, the unit probes. At the module level, that module level phenomenon, those driving question boards, okay? Please use those. The integration of the activities from the hands-on, the applying practices, the web quest, the virtual lab, the real world bio or real world chem, so all of those things are opportunities for students to explore that phenomenon and to come up with evidence for the reasoning. Then you have those support tools that are built in. Science notebook for biology, you've got that reading essentials. For everybody, you've got science notebook. You've got the um, smart book, which I would so recommend. And then you have integrated in those explore and explain all kinds of animations and click throughs and widgets that are there help your students understand the material. With anything in the program, you can do four or five things with it. Number one, you can assign it. Number two, you can put it on the student page. Number three, you can put it in the presentation. Number four, you can add it to the calendar. All of those ways are ways for students to have access to the material, just depending on if you wanna look at it or not. And then I promise, last thing I'm gonna show you, just because I love it, if you wanna see what a student is doing, Work-wise, you can do that two ways. If it's an assignment, you can go to assignments, okay? Um, this chemistry class doesn't have one, but I can click and I can look at their scores and view their work. But you can also go to the roster. Oh, you know what? Let me go back to biology just for a second, guys, because I have students in this one. Let me go back to bio. I can go, okay, so I could go to assignments. I could go down here to view scores, and I could look at their work okay, once they submitted it. But you can also go into the roster and you could pick a student and right next to their name, you could click and say, emulate this student. I'm gonna look at Alexander's material when I hit continue. I'm now on Alexander's page. So you'll notice in my calendar, I've got a couple assignments here and I've got some learning materials here. If I click into, these are things I assigned out earlier. If I click into any of these, I'm actually in his material. Um, there was a question and then when I get done, I can exit, but I can go in and see his work. I can look into explore and explain, see what he's filled in, science notebook, so on, okay? So I'm gonna exit that. I'm um, in the chat just now. We're going to do a last few Q&A. Um, let me back up here. Um, somebody asked, will it show up in the student ebook once it's assigned? 
and I'm not sure if you could clear, or do they have to access a separate assignment? But if you mean smart book, they, it has to be a separate assignment. So they have the regular interactive ebook and they have the smart book. So if you have the smart book, you do have to assign it for them to get it, and it will be a separate assignment. Are there any features for preventing students from cheating? You know, that's uh, on our list that we're working on at some time in the future, we will be able to lock the browser. Um, the, the big thing about like assessments and stuff with students cheating is this. One, I would set a time limit because that's going to give them, they only have so much time to do it without going and getting other resources. And then the second one is, is having students explain reasoning. Because like in a chemistry problem, they could go find the answer, but if they can't explain the reasoning, they probably didn't do it. So there's not a browser lock right now for the assessments. Um, that is on our list of improvements that eventually we'll put out, but I have no timeline on that. So Sharish or Asani, um, if there are any questions in the Q&A, let's address those right now, because I know we're six minutes over time. Asana, have you received any as a host? Because I didn't see any in the Q&A. As they came, DJ, you were able to pick them up. Okay, good. And if you have any questions for DJ, please let us know now. We can cover them off if there's anything that you'd like to ask. Okay, I've got one last question for all of you then. If you would put in the chat box, okay, we get done with this. There's something I said that you kind of remember, but you don't remember all of it. Where could you go to get other professional development support? There are three places. One to help, very good. The help menu right up here. If I go by Inspire Science and click my profile, there's the help menu. That's one. Okay, second one I'm gonna show you is somebody put my tools and that's close. If I go to the course level and I go to program resources, remember program unit module lesson, and I go to the program, you have a whole section on professional learning. Okay, you have this courses, you have all this material right here. That's the second place. And then the third place, we're gonna send you a recording of this and I know you just loved hearing my voice so much, you want to play this every day um, just because it sues you before you start classes, okay? Just kidding about that one. But three different places to get help, and then feel free to reach out to us, as Sharif said. You know, if there are other questions, we would be glad to ask those to help you. Um, last thing I'm going to do really quick, here's my email address if you want to reach out to me directly with questions, dj.west, W-E-S-T. DJ.west at mheducation.com. DJ.west at mheducation.com. Feel free to reach out and then I'll make sure that we try to get the information for you. Okay. Guys, I'm going to stop there and let you take it over. Any closing comments? Thank you, DJ. That was really, really thorough. Uh, and I believe we've answered all your questions. If you have any furthermore, you can drop them off in to DJ or the email address below. We also have a repeat session of this webinar. I've just sent a link in the chat box. If you want to re register for this again, uh, this has on Saturday, 29th, you can do that. We also have a couple of back to school resources for grade six to 12 and K8 to eight. So be sure to check the link out and you can register for any of our webinars. And sure, the only other thing I'd say, Saturday should be Jason doing this session, but uh, all your good thoughts and prayers for Jason because of the um, uh, hurricane that's coming into Texas where he lives. So we would appreciate that. Yes, hope so. Thank you so much everyone for joining. You can get in touch with, with us on our social channels that you can see on your screen. And thank you again, DJ, for a wonderful session. Hey, have a great afternoon and evening, everyone. Thanks for being a part of it.